So, do we possess money or does money possess us? In Luke chapter 12, Jesus is asked uh, by a man who says, Jesus, tell my brother to share the inheritance with me. And uh, Jesus goes on to share uh, a parable about a rich fool who built up so much and did everything seemingly on his own. It's, it's his crop, uh, it's his barns, it's his decision to build bigger barns. And uh, that night his life is uh, called for by God and he dies and Jesus says, come on, you know, uh, rich towards yourself or rich towards God, which, which one are you going to be? The thing is that money's important. Of course we know that Jesus God knows we need these things, we need to pay the mortgage, the rent, uh, whatever it might be we need to provide and to eat and stuff. But I think at the heart of it was that this man was possessed by what he could get, what he felt he was owed. And uh, this was the dominant factor of his life. Whereas elsewhere Jesus says, seek first the kingdom of God, i.e. that should be our main focus, i.e. We should be searching after the things of God, the kingdom of God. We should be filled with the spirit of God rather than a desire to have loads of possessions or bumper sticker theology. You know, who, who dies with the most toys wins because ultimately you can take nothing with you. So it comes back to that question, do we possess money or does money possess us? Or are we children of God who are willing to give ourselves to God and what he wants from us? But of course we can say, but I give my 10%. Surely that's enough, you know. Uh, God gets something from me and then I get to do what I want with the rest. But the reason for the tithe, the 10%, certainly in the Old Testament, was the idea that it was a reminder to the people to say everything belongs to God. And you give 10% as a reminder that everything belongs to him and as a thank you uh, to what he has provided. So when it comes to the New Testament and people say, well, the tithe isn't mentioned in the New Testament. Well, it is. And often in a very negative way, uh, when Jesus speaks in the stories to say, you know, you give your 10 percent. And often this is to the religious leaders of the day. You give your 10 percent, but your heart is very far from God. And so we give to God and we give to those in need because God has given to us. Because what we have is to be a blessing to others. Yes, it's to provide. God has given us stuff to provide for us. But he's given that we also might be generous to others and we should share what we have. Because ultimately, it all belongs to him. So money should not possess us. We possess money and we use it to provide, but also to bless others and to provide for those who do not have. And so you don't need money. In many ways, <laughs> you need the spirit of God. That's what we should be after. That's what we should be searching for. That's what we should be longing to be filled with. After all, Mother Teresa uh, had no money. and Look what she achieved. Dr. Martin Luther King presumably lived off a Baptist stipend and uh, achieved far more than his salary would have dictated. And Peter and John met a man outside the temple and said, money we don't have, but what we give you, we give in Jesus' name. And they healed the man. So, yeah. Better to search after the things of God, to be rich towards God, to be filled with the spirit of God and God will provide for the rest.